The Spanish conquest of El Salvador was the campaign undertaken by the Spanish conquistadores against the late post-classic Mesoamerican polities in the territory that is now incorporated into the modern Central American nation of El Salvador. El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America, and is dominated by two mountain ranges running east-west. Its climate is tropical, and the year is divided into wet and dry seasons. Before the conquest the country formed a part of the Mesoamerican cultural region, and was inhabited by a number of indigenous peoples, including the Pipal, the Lenca, the Xinca, and Maya. Native weaponry consisted of spears, bows and arrows, and wooden swords with inset stone blades, they wore padded cotton armor. The Spanish conquistadores were largely volunteers, receiving the spoils of victory instead of a salary, many were experienced soldiers who had already campaigned in Europe. The Spanish expeditions to Central America were launched from three different Spanish jurisdictions, resulting in rival conquests by mutually hostile Spanish captains. Spanish weaponry included swords, firearms, crossbows and light artillery. Metal armor was impractical in the hot, humid climate of Central America and the Spanish were quick to adopt the quilted cotton armor of the natives. The conquistadors were supported by a large number of Indian auxiliaries drawn from previously encountered Mesoamerican groups. The first campaign against the native inhabitants was undertaken in 1524 by Pedro de Alvarado. Alvarado launched his expedition against the Pipal province of Cuscatlan from the Guatemalan highlands, but by July 1524 he had retreated back to Guatemala. Gonzalo de Alvarado founded San Salvador the following year, but it was eradicated by a native attack in 1526, during a general uprising that spread across the region. Pedro de Alvarado returned to campaign in El Salvador in 1526 and 1528, and in the latter year, Diego de Alvarado re-established San Salvador and issued encomiendas to his supporters. In 1528, the uprising finally ended when the Spanish stormed the native stronghold at the Peñol de Sinacantan. In 1529, El Salvador became embroiled in a jurisdictional dispute with neighboring Nicaragua. Pedrarias de Villa sent Martín de Estet at the head of an expedition to annex the territory to Nicaragua. Estet captured the leader of a rival Spanish expedition in eastern El Salvador, and marched on San Salvador, before being repulsed by a relief force sent from Guatemala. In 1530, Pedro de Alvarado ordered the establishment of a new settlement at San Miguel, in the east of the country, to protect against further incursions from Nicaragua, and to assist in the conquest of the surrounding area. Indigenous uprisings against the invaders continued, spreading from neighboring Honduras. The general uprising across the two provinces was put down by the end of 1538, and by 1539 the province was considered pacified. The conquistadores discovered that there was little gold or silver to be found in El Salvador, and it became a colonial backwater with a small Spanish population, within the jurisdiction of the Captaincy General of Guatemala. Geography El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America, extending approximately 261 kilometers 162 miles east-west and 100 kilometers 62 miles north-south, covering an area of 21,040 square kilometers 8,124 square miles. Much of its territory occupies a volcanic plateau about 600 meters 2,000 feet above mean sea level. It is located on the Pacific coast of Central America and is bordered by Guatemala to the west, and Honduras to the north and east. The country is seismologically active, and has a history of devastating earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The country is divided into four main regions, two mountain ranges run east-west across the country, with a 50-kilometre wide central plateau dividing them. The northern range are the Sierra Madre, rising to an altitude of 2,200 meters 7,200 feet follow the border with Honduras. The southern range is a volcanic chain composed of more than 20 volcanoes clustered in five groups. The Santa Ana volcano rises near the Guatemalan border to an altitude of 2,365 meters 7,759 feet, its peak is the highest point in the country. The Pacific lowlands form a narrow littoral plain running along the south coast. El Salvador has over 300 rivers draining into the Pacific. 
The Lempa River is the only navigable river, and flows from Guatemala through the Sierra Madre and along the Central Plateau, before crossing the volcanic chain to drain into the Pacific Ocean, dividing the country into clearly defined western and eastern regions. Most of the other rivers are short, flowing either from the Central Plateau through gaps in the volcanic chain, or draining the coastal plain. Climate. El Salvador has a tropical climate with a relatively narrow temperature variation, largely dependent upon altitude, with the average temperature ranging between 18.0 and 32.0 degrees Celsius .4 and .6 degrees Fahrenheit. At the highest altitudes, the temperature can drop below freezing. The country experiences a dry season from mid-November to mid-April and a rainy season from mid-May to mid-October. El Salvador has one of the highest rainfalls in Latin America, varying from an average annual rainfall of 170 centimeters (68 in) on the Pacific coast to 240 centimeters (96 in) in the highlands of the Sierra Madre. Topic: <laughs> El Salvador before the conquest. Before the conquest, El Salvador formed a part of the Mesoamerican cultural region. The central and western portions of the territory were inhabited by the Pipil, a Nahua people related to the Aztecs of Mexico. The Pipil were divided into three main provinces in El Salvador, the two largest were Cuscatlan and Azalca, while Nañuelco was the smallest of the three. Cuscatlan extended from the Paz River in the west to the Lempa River in the east. Azalca lay to the southwest of Cuscatlan and was subservient to it on the eve of the Spanish conquest. Its territory is now incorporated into the modern departments of Ahuachapan and Cincinnati. Other indigenous groups with territories in El Salvador were the Chorti and the Pacomam, both of these were Maya peoples, the Lenca, the Xinca, and the Matagalpa. The post-classic Maya and Pipil cities were relatively small by Mesoamerican standards, especially when compared with the great Maya cities of the earlier Classic period c. 250-950 AD. The Lenca occupied territory to the east of the Lempa River, where their principal kingdom was Chaparastic. Chaparastic extended across territory now incorporated into the departments of La Union, Morazan, and San Miguel. The Chorti and Pacomam occupied territories in the west. The extreme east of El Salvador was occupied by the Mang, with the Matagalpa in the southeast. The population of the entire territory of El Salvador is variously estimated at anything between 130,000 and 1 million at the time of the conquest. The low mid estimates within this range are more likely. The three principal kingdoms of Cuscatlan, Azalca, and Chaparastic engaged in regular warfare, and smaller groups occasionally rebelled against their larger neighbors. There was flourishing trade, with cacao as the principal commodity, although maize, cotton, and balsam were also traded. Native weaponry and tactics The Pipil used wooden weapons with stone blades. Their weapons included long spears, atlatls spear throwers, arrows, and the machina a wooden sword with inset obsidian blades similar to the Aztec macahuitl. These weapons proved inferior to elements of Spanish warfare such as steel, the horse and firearms. The Spanish described how the natives of El Salvador wore thick cotton armor, described as three fingers thick, that extended down to their feet and significantly encumbered them. After the first two large scale battles between the Spanish and Pipil armies resulted in decisive victories for the European invaders, the natives preferred to flee their settlements at their approach rather than face the conquistadors on an open battlefield. A common tactic of the natives was to concentrate themselves in strongly defended mountaintop fortresses. Background to the conquest Christopher Columbus discovered the New World for the Kingdom of Castile and Leon in 1492. Private adventurers thereafter entered into contracts with the Spanish crown to conquer the newly discovered lands in return for tax revenues and the power to rule. The Spanish founded Santo Domingo on the Caribbean island of Hispaniola in the 1490s. 
In the first decades after the discovery of the new lands, the Spanish colonized the Caribbean and established a center of operations on the island of Cuba. In the first two decades of the 16th century, the Spanish established their domination over the islands of the Caribbean Sea, and used these as a staging point to launch their campaigns of conquest on the continental mainland of the Americas. From Hispaniola, the Spanish launched expeditions and campaigns of conquest, reaching Puerto Rico in 1508, Jamaica in 1509, Cuba in 1511, and Florida in 1513. The Spanish heard rumors of the rich empire of the Aztecs on the mainland to the west of their Caribbean island settlements and, in 1519, Hernán Cortés set sail to explore the Mexican coast. By August 1521 the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan had fallen to the Spanish. The Spanish conquered a large part of Mexico within three years, extending as far south as the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. The newly conquered territory became New Spain, headed by a viceroy who answered to the Spanish crown via the Council of the Indies. The conquest of Central America that followed was effectively an extension of the campaign that overthrew the Aztec Empire. Conquistadors. The conquistadors were all volunteers, the majority of whom did not receive a fixed salary but instead a portion of the spoils of victory, in the form of precious metals, land grants and provision of native labor. Many of the Spanish were already experienced soldiers who had previously campaigned in Europe. A sizable portion of the Spanish conquistadors were from the southwestern regions of Spain, with their origins in Andalusia and Extremadura. Up to 1519, according to licenses issued in Spain, over half were from these two regions. From 1520 to 1539, this fell to just under half of all conquistadors leaving Spain. The conquest of the Central American Isthmus was launched from three directions, Mexico, Panama, and the Caribbean island of Hispaniola. Relations between rival conquistadors were dominated by mutual distrust, greed, and envy. The conquistadors were accompanied by a great many indigenous allies. These included Tlaxcaltecs, Mexicas, Cholatecs, Xochimilcos, Texcocanos, and Hujotzincas that accompanied Pedro de Alvarado from central Mexico, Zapotecs and Mixtecs that joined him as he marched south towards Guatemala and El Salvador, and Coxicals that joined him in Guatemala. A key strategy was the establishment of colonial towns across the territories that underwent the process of conquest and colonization, they were used to project Spanish power over the surrounding countryside. The Spanish were particularly horrified by the Mesoamerican religious practice of human sacrifice, prompting them to attempt to eradicate the native religion. <inaudible> <inaudible> Spanish weapons and armor The steel sword was the greatest Spanish advantage in terms of weaponry. The conquistadors employed broadswords, rapiers, firearms including the arquebus, crossbows and light artillery such as the falconet. An important Spanish advantage was the use of war horses, their deployment often terrified the native inhabitants of the Americas, who had never seen horses until European contact. As important as the physical advantage given to a mounted conquistador was the ability to rapidly move bodies of troops across a battlefield to outmaneuver their opponents, who were exclusively on foot. Repeated mounted charges could have a devastating impact on massed native infantry. The Spanish also employed fierce war dogs in battle. When laying siege to native fortresses, they would on occasion build wooden siege engines padded with cotton armor, which would act to shield attackers from enemy missiles, and allow them to climb over any fortifications. Mounted conquistadors were armed with a 3.7 meters 12 feet lance, that also served as a pike for infantrymen. A variety of halberds and bills were also employed. As well as the one-handed broadsword, a 1.7 meters 5.5 feet long two-handed version was also used. Crossbows had 0.61 meters 2 feet arms stiffened with hardwoods, horn, bone and cane, and supplied with a stirrup to facilitate drawing the string with a crank and pulley. Crossbows were easier to maintain than matchlocks, especially in a humid tropical climate. Metal armor was of limited use in the hot, wet tropical climate. It was heavy and had to be constantly cleaned to prevent rusting. In direct sunlight, metal armor became unbearably hot. Conquistadores often went without metal armor, or only donned it immediately prior to battle. They were quick to adopt quilted cotton armor based upon that used by their native opponents, and commonly combined this with the use of a simple metal war hat. 
Shields were considered essential by both infantry and cavalry, generally this was a circular target shield, convex in form and fashioned from iron or wood. Rings secured it to the arm and hand. <laughs> Impact of Old World diseases Diseases introduced to the Americas by the conquistadors had a great impact upon indigenous populations. As the Spanish were occupied with the conquest of Mexico, these diseases ran ahead of them from 1519 onwards. A smallpox epidemic swept through Guatemala in 1520 to 1521 and is also likely to have spread throughout the Pipal region of El Salvador. By the time the Spanish arrived in the area in 1524, it is estimated that up to 50% of the native population of El Salvador had already been eliminated by the new diseases, against which they had no immunity. It is likely that disease had significantly weakened the Pipal by the time they fielded large armies against the Spanish at Acajutla and Tecuscalco. Further waves of epidemic diseases spread across Mesoamerica in 1545–1548, and again in 1576–1581, reducing indigenous populations to just 10% of their pre-contact levels, making successful resistance against the European colonizers extremely difficult. The deadliest of the newly introduced diseases were smallpox, malaria, measles, typhus, and yellow fever. Their introduction was catastrophic in the Americas. It is estimated that 90% of the indigenous population had been eliminated by disease within the first century of European contact. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spanish discovery of El Salvador. Gil González de Villa and Andrés Niño first explored the coast of El Salvador in 1522 as they sailed northwest along the Pacific coast of Central America from Panama, and briefly landed in the Bay of Fonseca. El Salvador fell in a frontier region between rival conquests launched southward from Mexico under the command of Hernán Cortés and his trusted lieutenant Pedro de Alvarado, and northward from Panama under the command of Pedrarias de Villa. Conquest The territory now incorporated into El Salvador was not politically unified at the time of Spanish contact. As with neighboring regions, this hindered the progress of incorporation into the Spanish Empire, as each small kingdom had to be overcome in turn. This contrasted with Mexico where a large empire had been rapidly overcome with the fall of its capital, Tenochtitlan. As Spanish authority gradually spread out from Mexico and Panama, this left El Salvador in an intermediate region temporarily beyond Spanish control. Spanish colonial towns were founded according to the whim of individual conquistadors, with no formal planning of their location or of communication routes between them, often leaving them isolated. In 1548, El Salvador was formally placed within the jurisdiction of the Audiencia Real of Guatemala, which extended along the Central American Isthmus from Chiapas, now in southern Mexico, to Costa Rica. First expeditions, 1524–1528 Pedro de Alvarado entered El Salvador from Guatemala in the rain season of 1524, leading an army of 250 Spaniards, 100 of which were mounted, and 5,000 Guatemalan allies. The invaders overcame the natives in pitched battles and fought off guerrilla attacks on their forces. Alvarado crossed the Rio Paz from Guatemala on 6 June 1524, and arrived at Mapacalco, in what is now the department of Ahuachapan, to find it abandoned. They continued to Acatepec, where the inhabitants had also fled the approaching Spanish expedition. <inaudible> <inaudible> Battle of Acajutla, 1524 From Acatepec, the Spanish expedition proceeded to Acajutla, on the Pacific coast. On 8 June 1524, they met with a massed native force, arrayed for battle half a league approximately 2 km .2 miles beyond the settlement. Alvarado's army initially approached close to the waiting warriors, before feigning a retreat towards a nearby hill. The native forces pursued for a quarter of a league, arriving within bow shot of the invaders, at which point Alvarado ordered both cavalry and infantry to charge. In the battle that followed, the defending natives were killed to a man. 
Alvarado described how the natives were so encumbered by their thick cotton armor and their weapons, that when they fell they were unable to stand back up to defend themselves. Many Spaniards were wounded in the battle, and Alvarado was seriously injured by an arrow that passed through his leg, he needed much time to recover and was left with a permanent limp. The Spanish rested in Acajutla for five days after the battle, in order to rest and recover from their wounds. Battle of Tecuscalco, 1524 Six days after the battle, Alvarado marched northeast searching for the city of Tecuscalco, some 8 kilometers miles from Acajutla, in the modern department of Cincinnati. Pedro de Portocarrero led a group of mounted scouts that managed to capture two native lookouts, from whom they learned that a large native army had gathered near the city, with forces gathered from the surrounding area. The Spanish scouts advanced until they found the enemy, then waited for the vanguard of 40 cavalry led by Gonzalo de Alvarado. Pedro de Alvarado was traveling in the rearguard, slowed by his wounds. Alvarado watched the battle unfold from a nearby viewpoint, and left command in the hands of his brothers. He sent Gómez de Alvarado with 20 cavalry to attack the left flank, and Gonzalo de Alvarado with 30 cavalry against the right flank. He sent Jorge de Alvarado with the rest of his men against a mass of warriors that was still distant but they stood off for a time, believing that the two forces were separated by a swamp. As soon as the Spanish discovered that the apparent swamp was in fact solid ground, they charged the enemy and routed them, killing a great many. After this battle, the Pipple refused to confront the Spanish upon an open battlefield, and resorted to guerrilla tactics. Retreat to Guatemala, 1524 Alvarado rested two days at Tezuzcalco, before proceeding to Miahuaclan, which had been abandoned by its inhabitants, then on to Atahuan modern Ateos, near the Pipal city of Cuscatlan, capital of the province of the same name. Messengers from the lords of Cuscatlan brought promises of submission to the king of Spain, but when Pedro de Alvarado's army arrived at the city, he found that the majority of the inhabitants had fled. Alvarado sent messengers to them, ordering them to return and submit, but they refused. Alvarado tried them in their absence, and condemned them to death. He branded all the Pipal prisoners as slaves. Although the Spanish had won decisive victories at Cincinnati and Acajutla, they failed to take the fortified Pipal cities of Cuscatlan and Azalca. Alvarado was informed that extensive lands lay ahead, with difficult terrain, many cities, and large populations. Frustrated by the lack of progress, Alvarado withdrew to Guatemala to regroup, with the intention of returning in the dry season. He had been in the province of Cuscatlan for 17 days, and left it at the end of June 1524. <laughs> <laughs> Founding of San Salvador Gonzalo de Alvarado founded the settlement of Villa de San Salvador in early 1525, before May of that year, but it was attacked and destroyed by natives in 1526, during a general Pipal uprising that engulfed the province of Cuscatlan. Diego de Alvarado, who was Pedro de Alvarado's cousin, was sent to reconquer Cuscatlan in the same year. He was accompanied by 300 Indian auxiliaries from Soconusco, 160 of whom died in the campaign. He was joined by Pedro de Alvarado after the latter returned from an expedition to Chiapas. By 1526, the territory of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras was racked by indigenous wars against the Spanish invaders. Azalca did not join the general uprising, having been militarily exhausted by the battles of Acajutla and Tecuscalco. The campaign that followed lasted two years, during which the Spanish battled continually against indigenous resistance. During this time, the natives defended themselves from fortified mountain strongholds. Pedro de Alvarado undertook further expeditions to El Salvador in 1526 and 1528. In 1528, the conquest of Cuscatlan was completed, with the aid of a significant body of Nahua allies from central and southern Mexico. On 1 April 1528, Diego de Alvarado re-established San Salvador, and distributed encomienda rights among his supporters. This site is now known as Ciudad Vieja, and is situated 8 kilometers miles south of Suchitoto. The location may have been chosen because it occupied a no-man's land between the territory of the Pipal to the west, the Lenca to the east, and the Chorti to the north. 
For the first few years, San Salvador was a frontier town under the constant threat of indigenous attack. Soon after the town was refounded, a Spaniard and some indigenous auxiliaries were killed when visiting a nearby settlement. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Sinacantan, 1528. The uprising around San Salvador was put down about a month later, when the Spanish stormed the mountaintop stronghold at Sinacantan, 5 kilometers (3.1 miles) south of the modern town of Tamanique. The hostile natives had retreated to their stronghold after their earlier attack. The uprising was considered the first native rebellion in Cuscatlan, since the initial invasion had already taken place, and San Salvador founded as a Spanish town. A Spanish column was dispatched from San Salvador, led by Diego de Alvarado and supported by indigenous auxiliaries. They found three or four allied native groups had set up a defensive position upon the strongly fortified Peñol de Sinacantan. Rock of Sinacantan, now known as Cerro Redondo, at least one of the groups was Pipal, and possibly all of them. The sides of the fortress were sheer, except for a single approach that was strongly defended. As the Spanish party attempted to storm the fortress, the natives threw rocks down upon them, and showered them with arrows and spears. On the first day, Spanish assaults were twice beaten back. Seeing that the fortress could not easily be taken, the Spanish built a wooden siege engine, which greatly impressed the defenders. One of the native lords called a truce and asked the Spanish to return to San Salvador, and promised that the rebellious Indians would arrive to swear loyalty to the King of Spain. The attackers believed this to be a trick, and launched a new attack using their newly built siege tower. They breached the fortifications and killed many of the defenders, while many others fled in terror. Once the fortress had fallen, the defeated Pipal defenders were given in encomienda to the inhabitants of San Salvador. The inhabitants were probably reduced to Tamanique. Inter-Spanish rivalry, 1529–1530 In 1529, Pedrarias de Villa sent an expedition led by Martín de Estet to annex the territory of El Salvador to his domains in neighboring Nicaragua, going so far as to distribute the unconquered natives of the Gulf of Fonseca in encomienda to his followers. At the time, Diego de Rojas was in command of the Spanish forces attempting to pacify indigenous resistance centered on Popocatépetl. In January or February 1530, Martín de Estet captured Rojas, and marched on San Salvador, but was unable to gain the support of the residents there, and set up camp at Paralapan, modern San Martín Paralapan, just to the south, which he called Ciudad de los Caballeros, City of the Knights. The acting governor of Guatemala, Francisco de Orduña, sent his captain Francisco López at the head of an expedition to drive out the interlopers. López left Santiago de los Caballeros de Guatemala in March 1530 with 30 cavalry, and an unspecified body of infantry. The residents of San Salvador rose up in arms to join the relief force, Estet abandoned his camp and retreated towards Nicaragua, taking with him 2,000 enslaved Cuscatlecos. López pursued Estet and caught up with his forces after crossing the Lempa River. Estet and his second-in-command fled for Nicaragua, and his soldiers surrendered to López. Diego de Rojas was freed, and the slaves recovered. This intervention put an end to Pedrarias de Villa's hopes of securing El Salvador as part of Nicaragua. Eastern El Salvador, 1530–1538 In order to defend against further rival Spanish incursions from the southeast, Pedro de Alvarado established the Spanish town of San Miguel, which he also used as a base of operations for attacks against the Lenca. A Spanish force commanded by Luis de Moscoso Alvarado, consisting of about 120 Spanish cavalry, accompanied by infantry and Indian auxiliaries, crossed the Lempa River and founded San Miguel on 21 November 1530. In addition to the Spanish colonists, the settlement included Mexica and Tlaxcalan allies, among other Indian auxiliaries. Most of the Spanish population of San Miguel abandoned El Salvador with Pedro de Alvarado when he set out on his expedition to Peru. Cristobal de la Cueva, under orders from Jorge de Alvarado in Guatemala, had entered Honduras with about 40 men to establish a new port and road to Guatemala, and to put down a native uprising there. 
He was challenged by Andrés de Sarazeta, governor of Honduras, and eventually marched south to San Miguel with his men, bringing an urgently needed influx of new colonists. San Miguel was refounded as San Miguel de la Frontera by Cristóbal de la Cueva on 15 April 1535. De la Cueva brought the area back within the jurisdiction of Guatemala, although the governor of Honduras vigorously protested. Eastern El Salvador, centered on the town of San Miguel, became the province of San Miguel, which included the territory of the pre Columbian province of Chaparastique. In early 1537, San Miguel was isolated by a general Lenca uprising that spread south from Honduras. A native army laid siege to San Miguel over the course of three days from 27 March. Their surprise attack caught many of the inhabitants defenseless, and 50 to 60 Spanish colonists were killed, more than half of the Spaniards then resident in the town. After three days the attackers were repulsed by reinforcements that were passing through from Guatemala en route to Peru, with the help of a detachment from San Salvador under the command of Antonio de Quintanilla. This uprising enveloped the territory of El Salvador, led by the Lenca ruler Lempira, and focused upon the Peñol de Cirquin, about 80 kilometers 50 miles north of San Salvador, within Honduras. Francisco de Montejo, then governor of Honduras, urgently appealed to San Salvador for reinforcements and supplies. Montejo sent 20 Spaniards supported by native auxiliaries south towards the valley of Zocoro, within the jurisdictional claim of San Miguel, but a scouting party was captured by the Spaniards resident there, and Montejo's column withdrew back to Honduras. En route to Camayagua, they were attacked by a Lenca force, and killed almost to a man. The inhabitants of San Salvador, alarmed by the uprising engulfing the region, responded by sending a great quantity of weapons, armor, gunpowder, and other supplies to Montejo in Honduras. 100 Indian auxiliaries were also sent, with 1,000 native porters. Further supplies were forthcoming from the embattled residents of San Miguel. By the end of 1538, Lempira's stronghold had been taken by the Spanish, and Montejo crossed from Honduras to San Miguel to assist in putting down continued indigenous resistance in the district. <laughs> Colonial organization By 1539, the Spanish advances in El Salvador were sufficient that Cuscatlan was considered fully pacified. In the immediate aftermath of the Spanish conquest, the conquistadors sought wealth through slaving and mining, but both of these industries soon faltered, and the colonists instead turned to agriculture. In 1545, San Salvador was moved to its current location, and on 27 September 1546, it was elevated in status to a city. El Salvador originally formed three administrative divisions, those of Cincinnata Azalcas, San Salvador Cuscatlan, and San Miguel. Cincinnata was an Alcadia mayor, while San Salvador, San Miguel, and Choloteca now in Honduras formed the Alcadia mayor of San Salvador. From 1524, all of these fell within the jurisdiction of Santiago de los Caballeros de Guatemala. In 1542, this jurisdiction was reorganized as the Real Audiencia de Guatemala, and later the Captaincy General of Guatemala. Ecclesiastically, all of El Salvador fell within the Roman Catholic Diocese of Guatemala. The native inhabitants of the Azalca region of El Salvador, famed for its prodigious production of cacao, were among the most heavily exploited in the whole Spanish Empire. By the end of the 16th century, this had led to the collapse of cacao production in the province. Historical sources The Annals of the Chocchiquels, an indigenous document from the Guatemalan highlands, contains an account of Pedro de Alvarado's initial incursion into El Salvador. Pedro de Alvarado wrote four letters to Hernán Cortés describing his conquest of Guatemala and El Salvador, of which two survive. One of these relates his expedition into El Salvador, with an eye to military detail. It is of particular use in its description of tactics and weaponry, although it is disdainful of the native culture. See also Atlacatl Spanish conquest of Guatemala Spanish conquest of Honduras Spanish conquest of Nicaragua Notes